Okay, so welcome to the roundtable session on introducing the ILA Research Network Open Applied Linguistics. Now, to help structure this session, uh, I'll start by introducing the uh, research network aims and scope, and then move on to our members and activity plans so that you have some background information. And then we'll move on to the free discussion parts. Okay. So the central aim of our network is really to promote open scholarship in applied linguistics. Now, one of the first questions you may wanna ask is what do we mean by open scholarship and why did you choose this term as opposed to other more commonly used terms such as open science or open research? And I think this is a great opportunity for us to explain the thinking behind this. Uh, what you're looking at here is the definition, uh, which is adapted from uh, the UNESCO recommendation on open science. And please uh, take a minute to read it. Now, um, if you're familiar with the UNESCO document, you would have noticed that we have actually replaced the term open science with open scholarship. Now, the reason we did this is really to try to get around some of the misconceptions around the term open science and to attract more researchers from different backgrounds. Now, open science is the most widely used term, but like any other terms, it has pros and cons. So on one hand is more well known, so people sort of immediately get what it means, especially for people working in psychology or doing quantitative research. But on the other hand, it may also appear exclusive to people who are in the humanities, for example, or for people who are doing qualitative research. Now, as a result, some people may see open science as only relevant to quantitative research or psychology. But this is actually a misconception. And as we can see from the UNESCO definition and from the talks and the panels at our symposium, this is clearly an inclusive construct, not just limited to certain sciences or methodologies. Now, with all that said, at the moment, the stereotypes associated with open science still persist, and it may still take some time before it's more widely understood as inclusive. And therefore, we deliberately chose a term that's less widely used, that is open scholarship, to deliberately invoke some curiosity or some thinking on what this term means and to hopefully attract more people doing different types of research to engage in the conversation. But it's also important to clarify that this is not about choosing one term over the other. In fact, most of the time we use the term open science, open research and open scholarship interchangeably. What really matters here is not which one we use, but rather to define it as inclusive and relevant to our discipline as possible. So hopefully this helps clarify uh, our thinking to you. Now, the scope of open scholarship is very wide ranging. It might be helpful to look at some examples to get more, uh, a more concrete sense of what this involves. And here we listed some topics as examples and please feel free to use this as a reference to let us know during the discussion part what topics you're most interested in and what your needs are. Okay, so moving on. Um, we've broken down our central aim into three specific aims. Uh, to raise awareness through talks and workshops, for example, or to promote research on this uh, topic and to initiate conversations and collaborations on this topic. So that's our aims and scope. Now, let me move on to the members uh, of our research network. Now, uh, I'm one of the conveners and uh, I have been involved actually in a number of projects on open scholarship, such as team science, crowdsourcing and open educational materials. And during my tenure as the chief editor of a graduate led journal at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge, I led several initiatives to promote open and transparent research. For example, we actually joined as one of the first journals in the field of education uh, to an initiative called Peer Community in Register Reports, uh, which is an innovative modification of the classical register reports. And actually it happens to be mentioned by Kara in her talk on register report today. So long story short, open scholarship is defined, uh, is definitely something that's very close to my heart. And hopefully by convening this research network, I can contribute more to this. Now, let me hand over to my colleague, Sim Wang, to say a few words. 
All right, thank you very much, Meng. Um, um, hello, everybody. Um, I think I, I recognize some of the names uh, this morning uh, during my talk and throughout the day. So um, thank you very much for, for supporting this inaugural event. And it's, it's an important event for us. And I think it's an important topic, uh, not, not only for us, but, but for our, our community as well. Uh, my name is Sin Wang. Um, I'm currently an assistant professor at Queen's University, Belfast, um, for, for roughly two more months. And then uh, I'll be moving to a new institution. So I'll be um, taking up an associate professorship at the University of Edinburgh. In, in August, so I'll be changing changing uh, affiliation and stuff like that in the future. But anyway, that's that's not important. Um, my my research interest is it's not directly related to to open scholarship or open science. My research interest is more in in, in assessment and in uh, technology and education. Uh, but given my interest in research synthesis, for example, and my passion really in uh, supporting uh, doctoral students and early career researchers in peer review in journals in particular, and Meng showed in one of the slides talking about open peer review. So this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm very interested about. Um, at the same time, one of the uh, topics that we want to cover under our umbrella is open educational resources. So this is extending beyond academia. And that's precisely what, what my project Tisa Graphics is about. And so I'm, I'm very interested in aspects of it. And I, I look forward to learning more about other aspects of, of open scholarship in applied linguistics with all of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sing Wang. Okay, now moving on uh, to to, uh, to our advisors. So actually, we are very lucky to have advisors to the network who have helped with many important decisions involving the development of the network. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with these scholars, and uh, you can check out more information about them on our website, of course. And not only are they established in their own research, they're also well known for their efforts in advancing the field through methodological reform and promotion of open research. And we're confident that with their guidance, uh, our network will continue to grow and develop. And actually, we have the fortune to have some of them here today. And I wonder if they want to quickly say hi or say a few words. Sorry for springing this on you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, uh, hello. Yeah, no, just I'm, I'm so happy you guys are doing this. Thank you so much for all the effort and time and energy and expertise. I have total confidence in, in you guys. And just for the record, my contributions have been so minimal. It's really been um, Meng and, and Sing Wong that have that have led this and um, and uh, put in all the effort and expertise needed to make it work. So I, I find this to be super exciting and impressive. So thank you guys so much. But I'm happy to, to contribute any way I can. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Um, I, I'll just second what Luke said. Um, this is really an impressive effort. And now do we have to have one of these um, every year? Uh, <laughs> who are you going to pass the torch on to for next year? Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward. This is just the start, I can tell. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where you all um, take this in the future. Um, there's lots of promise. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. I think this is a, a great initiative and I really like the kind of critical thinking about open scholarship, right? Really thinking about what that is, how it, it can be maximally appealing to so many different types of research really that we do in applied linguistics. So congratulations to the team on this. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. And for the record, this is not planned at all. I'm just fishing compliments. So <laughs> bear with me. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the to the next slide then, uh, because I do want to sort of for us to get into the discussion. So what you are looking at here is actually uh, a really sort of the most important component to our network, that is the, the network members. And what you're looking at is the breakdown of the career stages of our uh, network members. Now, currently we have 244 registered members, and you can see that we have a reasonable representation across different uh, career stages, particularly for people in earlier uh, uh, stages in their career. So of course, uh, you're more than welcome to join us by signing up to our mailing list, uh, which is free and, and also simple. Okay, so let's move on to our activity plans. So now it's important to note that we're still in the process of discussing and planning this, and all of them are sort of still in the early stages, but we think it's helpful to announce our intentions so that you know what potential, uh, what the potential possibilities are. 
so the first one is the REN Symposium at ILA's uh, 60th anniversary uh, World Congress in 2024. This is actually one of our obligations as the research network or as an ILA research network to contribute a symposium to ILA World Congress. And we will submit a proposal next year. Uh, and if you'd like to contribute to our symposium, please get in touch and we're happy to discuss uh, in more details. Now, the second uh, uh, sort of activity in planning is, uh, is that the Center for Language Acquisition at Penn State University he has kindly offered to sponsor an Open Applied Linguistic Award with us to help promote excellent work on open scholarship in applied linguistics. So we talked about sort of um, increasing the incentives uh, in during today's talk, right? And this is one of the sort of ways that we can hopefully contribute to this. And we're still currently discussing the details, but we will keep you posted as we proceed. We also plan to submit a special issue proposal on open science or open scholarship to research methods in applied linguistics. We've communicated this idea uh, with the editor in chief and he's supportive of this idea. So if you're interested in contributing, let us know as well. Now, lastly, uh, we also uh, plan to hold talk series, workshops and training, and we would really appreciate your input on what topics you are interested in and what kind of training uh, you think uh, you might need. And actually to sort of facilitate our uh, conversation, we've created a Padlet for you to share your thoughts um, and ideas with us. We would very much uh, value and appreciate your input. And now let me uh, stop the recording and let's move to the sort of interaction part of this round table. Okay.